Hey, what's up everybody? First and foremost, thank you to all the new subscribers who have joined this week. Every week we're getting new subscribers, and comments, and it's it's really exciting for me. I've really been enjoying your guys' feedback. And if this is one of the first videos you've watched on my channel, please take a moment, if you enjoy the content, to hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell notifications, it really helps out the channel. That all being said, let's hop right into this video. I'm pretty excited about it. For those of you who've seen my home studio and things like that, I uh, I have a small little home studio. I don't do like professional recordings in here. I usually do a lot of demo tracks for band members or things like that, or if I need to send somebody a guitar track for one of their recordings, I have the capability to do that. But I use GarageBand. I used to have Logic, but when I changed uh, uh, to a newer Mac, I didn't end up downloading it and it was right when they had done the big upgrade to GarageBand. Well, I started messing with the, the upgrade to GarageBand that happened, I don't know, about a year ago, I guess, uh, maybe more, and it's surprisingly good. So instead of putting Logic on this computer, especially where it was an older version, I've just been using GarageBand. I've been getting more and more into some heavier editing in GarageBand, and one of the things that really stinks, especially about doing it all yourself, is especially where you, I have, if you've seen some of my other videos, I have my mobile pre and my desk and, and monitors all hooked up over on this side of the room, and uh, it's just it's kind of a pain because when I want to set up a bunch of mics or something to mic an acoustic or a drum kit or something like that, it's just very hard. You gotta, I usually leave like two measures uh, before the music starts and I'm over there trying to hit record, hit, get in my chair, get on my guitar, ready to go and play or, or whatever. I had searched a while back for a way to get around this and uh, I couldn't find anything. I did find something in the app store called Logic Remote. And I'm like, well, that's for Logic, whatever. And I kept going, oh, well, they don't have anything for GarageBand. Well, so I, uh, I don't know. I was looking through the App Store the other day, and I saw Logic Remote again. And I clicked on it, and I was like, I wonder if I could make this work with GarageBand. And sure enough, guys, it does work, and it's super simple. You don't have to uh, be really good about workarounds to make this app work with that program. It just works. And uh, it's pretty amazing. So basically, you just go to the App Store, you download Logic Remote onto your iPad. Um, I think it only used to work on the iPad, but I did find it in my App Store on my phone, and I downloaded it. I haven't had a chance to mess with it much myself, um, but I'm pretty sure now with the newer with the newer iPhones, I'm on a 7 Plus, and it works. It, I, I'm pretty sure it works. So basically, you just make sure after you download the app, which is free, you have your iPad as well as your laptop on the same wireless network in your house. You open up Logic Remote on your iPad and when you open up your uh, computer, if you have GarageBand open, the iPad will ask you to, uh, if you'd like to connect to that computer, you click the computer you want to connect to and on your Mac it will ask you, do you want to allow this device to control the program and if you click yes you're in and basically it's it's very simple and once you're in it has a bunch of great features that you can start stop your recording and things like that there's also mixing features so that if you want to sit back a little bit further in your room which sometimes I find myself standing out in my room to kind of get a bigger a bigger room sound instead of being right up against the monitors you know you can make an edit on the fly not be near your not be near your laptop and uh, it's just, it's pretty awesome. It does have some other features like uh, digital instruments, like you can add tracks, you can uh, jump around your recording. I probably would never use the virtual instruments, uh, especially wirelessly. I haven't messed with it much, like I said, so I don't know if there would be latency issues or anything like that between your iPad to the Mac, especially in a recording situation, but it's still cool nonetheless. And um, I just think it is an awesome little thing that I wish I'd known a long time ago about GarageBand and using Logic Remote. It's pretty awesome and I'm pretty excited about it. The only thing that I was kind of hoping it would do, and I haven't figured this out yet, is when you're working with your EQ, especially where I'm so used to working with digital boards now that are controlled by iPads and a live in a live sound setting, I was 
really hoping that some of the uh, parametric EQs, I could control some of that from the iPad. But like I said, I just found out that this would work and I haven't had a chance to mess with it too much. But if you guys have been able to get like parametric EQing, working with the iPad, maybe post that in the comment or if you have a video that you've done about that, shoot it to me, I'd love to see it. And uh, I hope this tip helps you. Uh, that's kind of why I started this whole gear tip section where, you know, as I find little cool things that hopefully will help you, especially where I wish I'd known this, you know, two years ago, um, even a year ago, it would have just been awesome. So I hope this helps you guys. I hope uh, if you're using this, this is a great workaround for you. And uh, yeah, it really helps. As always, thank you so much for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you like the content. Be sure to subscribe and uh, leave a comment down below if this has helped you and maybe some of the other things that you may like about the Logic Remote with GarageBand. So I hope to help and as always, you guys keep rocking.